Ahoy hoy and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian and today's video is sponsored by it. Escape from Site 19. This is actually kind of heavy, which is a good demonstration of how much stuff is in here. I'll do more about this at the end of the video, but I just wanted to make sure and announce that I was sponsored before I uh, let's make sure. There you go. Now you can see the logo the entire time. I want to make sure I announce that the video was sponsored at the top. Good, good practices. Also, I think required by law at this point, which is good. Anyway, today we are going to talk about the dankest memes from Dank Memes from Site19. And I'm just going to start with the very first meme. Acknowledge the fact that your brother is sorry for murdering you. And sorry? What am I, Canadian? Is sorry for murdering you, cares for you, and is trying to become a better man. Or draw 25. Draw 25. I actually uh, included this more for there was a comment on the actual Reddit post about how the, uh, if you think about the biblical story of Cain and Abel and the idea that this is like, you know, the first children, first siblings to ever exist. Uh, and there are, they have other siblings, of course, but these, I believe, were the two oldest. And even if they weren't, it doesn't really matter. That's not the point. <laughs> I go on tangents. Um, but if you think about it, Abel and Cain, like, had no idea what murder was. Although, to be fair, the real crime of Cain wasn't uh, killing Abel, actually. This is true of a lot of stuff in the Bible where people pick up the wrong message from it because they're using modern uh, senses of morality to understand what happened. The problem wasn't that he killed Abel. The problem was Cain lied to God about it. It's a little bit like in Sodom and Gomorrah where people pick up the wrong message about why that was bad. It wasn't about any of the stuff they were doing. It was about how they treated guests and specifically God's messengers. Cain and Abel is the same thing. Cain had no idea that hitting Abel with a rock was going to kill him. And that's something that somebody left as a comment, which is a very good point. But that's not why he's been punished for forever. It's because he, <laughs> that's not the reason why Abel got, you know, or it's not the reason why Cain got punished and Abel is, you know, this whole other thing now. It doesn't forgive him for it in the SCP Foundation lore. But Cain is punished not because Abel won't forgive him. Cain is punished because he lied to God. So the real question becomes like, what is the real backstory here? And if you read enough SCP articles, you can come up with something, but there's just too many to settle on one thing. We only wish to reclaim our names so that we might return home. The long-eared one. Uh, can't you just make up new names? The being who carries a ukulele. A furry fairy. John Smith. True. I don't really... <laughs> I don't have anything to add to that. because I just, I just included it because it's very true. SCP-682. Those Foundation fools haven't tried to destroy me today. Have they finally given up or something? SCP-682, noticing that his article has a negative 10 rating. I actually... I don't know if this exists in the wiki. I feel like if... I know I've discussed this as a plot story... A story uh, pitch before uh, on chats with other writers. I don't know if it exists, but I feel like it must. And that's that... Truly, the reason for 682's impossible, like, it can't be destroyed, isn't because of any necessarily in-universe thing, but a wholly meta problem in that as long as the article is highly rated, SCP-682 will continue to persevere. Sort of an Andrew Swan's proposal style interpretation of 682, which I quite enjoy as a concept. But I, if it doesn't exist in the wiki, somebody should definitely write that. I mean, the pataphysics stuff that's been going on for forever now, it's, you know, do it, do it, do it, which is dovetails nicely into this. A powerful, well, I mean, I don't think he shows up in this. So I don't know. A powerful reality bender. I don't fear you. Then you will die braver than most. Uh, I feel like the GOC being like this reaper of reality benders thing kind of doesn't work for me. I like the idea that they fail probably more often than they succeed. It's just not, you know, those those are not necessarily as interesting. Although those could be just as interesting of stories. Gods in any story. Rawr! Gods in the SCP universe. <sighs> Sit back with some coffee. 
I mean, yeah, because the idea is, and the problem is, is that the SCP Foundation writers, myself included, have become sort of addicted to the idea of of subverting your expectations. So what's your expectation for God? All powerful, all seeing, all, you know, all this, all that. And instead, it's just some dude drinking some coffee and relaxing. Speaking as someone who has written a god into an SCP, SCP-2343, not 343, but 2343, which is my sort of a spiritual rewrite of the original, since the original is still on the wiki. I hate the original. Um, but 2343 is an Egyptian creation myth god. So, yeah. And he's just, like, hanging out in Tennessee when the SCP Foundation finds him. The whole thing is based on a joke of... Um, well, joke and or reference to a song called How I Got to Memphis. I just love the idea that uh, ancient Egyptian uh, gods to uh, mo- well, mother and a father. A- well, they are a mother and a father because they have a kid. But a uh, husband and wife, a, a creation god and a destructive god uh, in Egypt leave, you know, and abandon the world for a while. And when they come back, they decide to go to Memphis but they get the wrong memphis they don't go to memphis egypt which is an ancient egyptian city they go to i think it might still exist i don't know for sure but if it doesn't it does or doesn't doesn't matter because they go to memphis tennessee and then they just kind of decide you know what this is nice let's stay here and they have a life for about 30 or 40 years it's a fun story but again we're talking about the ultimate creative uh, force in the universe and the ultimate destructive force in the universe settling down in tennessee and having a kid And it's fun, but there's also something to be done with, I mean, well, I shouldn't say that because it's like, oh, we do too many subversions of the expectations, but reality, there's a lot of straight, like, oh my God, the world is going to end. Everything is, everything is horrible now stories. I mean, 343, if you consider him to be God, which there's really no evidence of that being actually true other than him stating it. And he's a reality bender, literally alters people's perceptions of him. I mean, he is a bad guy in the story. He makes somebody disappear who doesn't believe in him. So, <laughs> you know, it's not all chilling. He makes people think that's what he is. We mistreat, oh, mistreat, all right. Our employees worse than any other company, Activision Blizzard. No way. We treat our employees way worse than you, Amazon. Amateurs. What was that, punk? amateurs yeah the scp foundation does not do so good by its employees most of the time in some versions of the scp foundations and some canons i would argue that with uh, except for in a very few situations i think they actually do by, right by their employees as much as they can it's just a dangerous job there's no other way away or, or, no which way around it scp speaking of SCP Foundation internal request form, uh, uh, 021 1996 You've detained an innocent man and separated him from his family for no good reason. I am requesting you go F yourself. Invalid request. <laughs> See, I like this is because this is an example of, um, I don't know which SCP this is from, to be fair. Uh, but the, <laughs> the fun part, I think, is that it just gives an example of how the SCP Foundation handles this sort of stuff. To me, it's like they get this so often, like there's the interpretation of this is like he's just covering up for feeling really bad. But there's an easy interpretation of this that is basically just uh, he says invalid request because like they're so used to this kind of behavior because of the way they act and treat people. that it's just like, oh, oh, that guy's being that being that way. Yeah, I kind of expect that to happen. And then we've got. MTF Zeta-9 is an elite squadron of the Foundation's expert specialists in exploration and containment of underground or enclosed spaces with anomalous properties, especially inconsistent topography or unstable space-time. It should be MTF Zeta-9 in, uh, on the SCP Foundation by description, <laughs> by actions, because <laughs> they just constantly get their asses kicked by every anomaly they go to explore. Though, what's the best way to put this? It's reasonable to expect that. I mean, anomalies are unexpected things. Even no matter how much experience you have with anomalies, there's always going to be things that happen that you're not expecting. Although, there were, again, there were a bunch of great comments on this one. Uh, one of them was, uh, you would think by the time 
they entered their say i don't know doesn't i don't know the exact comment but it was something along the lines of by the time they entered their doesn't anomaly you would think they would expect the door to close behind them because that happens in so many articles um i do know that there are versions of zeta 9 where things don't go badly but it, the if they're not if they don't go badly they're not the focus of the story and you might be like well that makes sense they're only worth the story is only worth telling if something bad happens yes and no <laughs> on the one hand that's the easiest way to tell a story with an mtf but mobile task forces being good at their jobs could be their own story what's the best way to put this a setback does not have to be a failure but with the uh with uh, zeta 9 as a great example Almost any time they face a setback, that's it. It's over. They're all going to die. And after the first dozenth times that happens, maybe even before that, uh, it gets a little boring. Maybe spice that up a little bit. You're wrong about kidnapping me. I did see the video that the source is from. Um, was it Tana Rad? I think is the name of the YouTube channel. I'll actually include... You know what? Um, it seemed like funny content to me. It seemed really weird content to me, but it seemed funny content to me. Uh, so I'll give you a link in the description to give it a look. Although, uh, you know, uh, kidnapping uh, SCP YouTubers is not the best idea. I do remember, and this was included in her video, uh, when she did the, uh, she said that I had a beard that would, uh, who knows what's hiding in there. And then, of course, uh, published her video after I had already gotten rid of my beard. So <laughs> that was a thing that happened. Uh, and she mentions it in there as well. But I also think you're missing a couple of other key uh, things. First of all, uh, let's see. Yep, right there. Having stuff like this and uh, easy, easy reach. Let's see if this is in here. Yep. I'm not going to. This is not real. I like to pretend like it is. I was going to use it as a prop for a joke here. This is just a... Uh, this isn't real. Although, if I hit somebody with this, that hurt. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's how I'm going to get... Avoid, you know, when getting avoiding getting kidnapped is actually quite hard. Uh, but uh, uh, I think this would be useful for it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I have... It's not the only weapons. It's those are the only weapons I feel comfortable showing off on the thing here. Not to seem like too much of a neckbeard. Um, but I, I don't know. I've always said this. This knife is used more for cooking than it is for hunting, even though it's a hunting knife. Uh, but I, I think that people might have a little bit of a difficulty. At, first of all, I'm a big guy, just in general. Uh, so that's going to be a problem, just moving me uh, against my will. <laughs> all i'd have to do is flop and man would they have trouble moving me into their van <laughs> much less fighting back uh, <laughs> i'm just saying anyway moving on kids who think siren head is an scp me being happy about kids being <laughs> introduced to the scp universe so my nephew and i think i've told this story before um about shit i want to say christmas or thanksgiving of last year and I, I know i've said this on the channel before uh was talking about siren head at the table while we were having our family meal and he said uh what was ex exact words he said siren head siren head siren head my dad stopped him after a certain amount of time because you know how kids can go he's only like eight or nine years old he got way way too excited about something that's not worth being that excited about um and it was like what is siren head because he wanted to know and my nephew was like he's an scp so here's the thing on the one hand i get where he's coming from for some young people scp has become shorthand for cryptid um which is fun because i mean like understanding what a cryptid is and isn't is a little bit more difficult than just saying an SCP uh, because SCP carries with it a lot of context that lets you understand what people are talking about but no no it's not and I actually stopped him midway and was like that is not true and then we had a discussion about intellectual property and why it's a bad thing to try and pretend like something like, and why but he's not eight or nine years old I think he was seven or eight last year 
Actually, it should have been seven. Yeah. It's, okay. So he's seven then and eight now. And of course, having a discussion about intellectual property and the problems with how the SCP Foundation is Creative Commons and Siren Head isn't, and pretending that it is makes some people think that it's okay to use it when they shouldn't, uh, was a useless endeavor, but I can't help myself sometimes. People defending the GOC because they aren't as bad as people think and that they generally have the interest, the best interest of humanity at heart. But the chair, though, again, read some of the comments for this, and there was another one that was related, but not exactly. Um, I think, what's the best way to put this? The GOC is wrong because the GOC in most interpretations is very absolutist. I mean, the SCP Foundation is wrong too. Their absolutist philosophy is also incorrect. Um, and that's the problem. It's the, it's not the philosophy itself of let's destroy things that are threats to humanity, which is a good idea. Uh, and the SCP Foundation, let's never destroy things that are threats. Well, not never, but let's almost never destroy things that are threats to humanity because we need to understand them better is sometimes also wrong. There's a middle ground, which in a lot of interpretations and newer stories, both the SCP Foundation and the GOC kind of fall into uh, where it is actually, you know, <laughs> a little bit more nuanced than that. At least their viewpoints of the various GOs, uh, GOIs is. Um, but in their classical interpretations, both of them are wrong. Uh, evil, good, doesn't really matter. And I think we'll talk about that in maybe the next, yeah, then the next one. Uh, saying there is no good or evil in the SCP universe is incorrect. We'll move on to the next meme because it's exactly what we're talking about. Uh, because there are evil GOIs and creatures and people. That's just a fact, there's a, it, no, almost, well, depending on how you want to define evil, if we want to get into the moral and ethical discussions of what is and isn't evil and what is and isn't good, we could be here all day. We're not going to do that. What we're going to say for sure, though, is that like children of the Scarlet King or the Chaos Insurgency are pretty clearly the bad guys. Like, even if you consider the SCP Foundation to be morally gray, which it is, it's gray, it's in the middle. Or the GOC to be morally great, which it is. It's also in the middle. It's probably a little bit more towards one side or the other, depending on your interpretation of it, but it's still in the middle. And a lot of other GOIs are the same way. B but not all of them, and not all people, and not all creatures and monsters that you run into. Some of them are just straight up evil. That evil exists, and so does good in the SCP universe, to be honest with you, although good's a little bit harder to define. But evil definitely exists. <laughs> Uh, the SCP Foundation use evil criminals as D-class personnel. All the countries in the world with a shitty legal system, including the United States. And the idea of D-class as they are portrayed in the SCP Foundation is re you know what? I should do a whole video on this. I'm gonna do a whole video on this. Fuck this. Let's just stop here because <laughs> this is getting way too long. I'm I might even cut a big chunk of that because I'm gonna do a whole video on this now. Thanks a lot, person that submitted this meme. I, your name's not on it, so I don't know exactly. It's in the list in the description, but I'd have to dig through to find it. <laughs> Either way, actually. Hold on, I might be able to find it, because I see the file name. There you are. Nope, that's not right. Recently closed tabs. Wait, okay, so... There we go. Ah. Posted by u forward slash sam u o l o. I think it's zeros, actually. Either way, uh, thank you, because I think you've given me an SCP video idea that I'm going to do sort of a follow-up to the You're Wrong About video that really dives more into the cultural and moral implications of the problems with D-Class. We'll talk about that on Thursday, I think. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, with that terrible uh, <laughs> thing, let's move on to our sponsor for the day. Escape from Site-19. Uh, now, you may have seen the video I did on this. There'll be a link in the description to that. In the, uh, yeah, there'll be a link in the description, along with a link to the website where you can buy this. Uh, Escape from Night Site 19 is a 
wonderful and just amazing looking uh, and just so well put together uh, piece of SCP content that you can just buy for your shelf. And there's all sorts of stuff in here that's great too. You can see the whole video I did on it, but that's neither here nor there. The important part is, is that I had a coupon code. Uh, let me check. It's Dr. Sumerian, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's Dr. Sumerian, one word. Again, the, the not link. Oh, there'll be a link to, alongside this, but the actual coupon code will be in the description is below. Um, a lot of you guys have actually gone and bought some of these, which is great, uh, but continue to do so. <laughs> Because uh, this, the code was only good uh, for July originally, but I managed to get it extended into August. Uh, it's going to be the last month for it, but until the end of August, you can use Dr. Sumerian and get 20% off of your total purchase uh, and the Escape from Site 19 website. And I highly, highly recommend it because it's a lot of fun. Anyway, I also got some other stuff we're going to talk about at some future point. Uh, probably next video will be a good one. Although the next video is going to be very serious, so maybe not. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then, look, first of all, if you go down, if you scroll down, you'll see a carousel of uh, various products. There is a product with this design on it there's black and yellow uh, and it's the you're wrong about series which is there's a poster there's a mug there's t-shirts there's hoodies winter is coming eventually it's not here yet but it's coming um and all sorts of stuff you're you know uh, certain classes in college maybe you want to have a you're wrong about this t-shirt start a conversation um and all sorts of different stuff. There's also the channel logo that you can get on stuff, which is a little bit more, uh, a little bit smaller. I think you can get like a little, I think there's one with like on the breast here and so on and so forth. There's uh, mugs and so on. I think this is the kind of stuff that you guys might really enjoy. And if you purchase it, that's money that goes to me. And that's great. Also, if you use that coupon code down here, or you, some money comes to me too. So, you know, think about that. And then, if you just like to help directly, head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including, actually, I don't have any uh, higher than $20 patrons anymore, which is disappointing, but to be expected. I like to do the, when I did the including thing, that was for the people who are above 20. Uh, I don't have any. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate, I literally, every single one of my uh, patrons, like, so thankful that they exist and so thankful that they're pledging. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here. And I will see you all again on Thursday.